I'm Jamie from Shamrock Girl World and today I'm going to show you how I raised a swallowtail butterfly in a winter greenhouse in fall 2021. But before we start, make sure to like and subscribe to my channel and ring the notification bell for more videos about exotic fruits and how to grow them from seeds. You can also follow my Instagram and Facebook pages for more fruit treat updates and the occasional Irish music and dance. At the beginning of November 2021, I moved my hundreds of fruit trees into winter greenhouses. The weather was getting colder and the sunlight was getting shorter. I put all my large trees and small seedlings in the two greenhouses, one of which was temperature controlled. After putting my plants in the greenhouses and checking on them a week later, I noticed a tiny caterpillar on one of my white sapote seedlings in the greenhouses front. The little poop-like speck was on the half-eaten leaf. It was a swallowtail caterpillar. It had been months since I've seen swallowtail butterflies in Central Texas. Earlier in the year, several caterpillars were eating my citrus and white sapote trees in June. Since the white sapotes are related to citruses, the caterpillars prefer the sapote leaves over my citrus seedlings. Some even stripped my white sapotes down to the branches. Luckily, the seedlings grew back. Even at that time, I didn't want to get rid of the caterpillars because I knew they would turn into swallowtail butterflies. We had many types of butterflies that summer, especially during peach season, so I was happy to let the caterpillars feast on the plants. We even saw monarch butterflies during the fall months as they migrated south. So I let the tiny caterpillars stay in the greenhouse and on my white sapote. I didn't think it would go anywhere else and it was safe in the front. We were also getting cold nights at the time, so I wanted it to be safe and warm in the greenhouse. As the days passed, the caterpillar got larger and larger, looking more like bird droppings. The white sapote leaves got smaller and smaller. Although the outdoor temperatures were warm for the fall, it was often humid in the greenhouse, which was good for the caterpillar and white sapotes. Two weeks later, the caterpillar grew to about one and a half inches long. It sat prominently on the top of my largest white sapote plant. Although it ate all the leaves off my smaller white sapote, I knew it would have plenty of leaves to eat from the larger tree. It was interesting to see the caterpillar moving around and responding to movement. It even let out its fake snake-like tongue when I was working in the greenhouse. A week later, which was one month after I discovered the caterpillar, I visited the greenhouse. However, I didn't see the caterpillar in its usual spot. I noticed that the white sapote seedling was growing back, but I didn't see the caterpillar anymore around the large seedlings or the shelves. I figured it was in its chrysalis or pupa phase in its life cycle, so I made sure not to move any plants because I didn't know where it was, but I hoped to see the caterpillar again. Two weeks later, I took the holiday break to work in my greenhouse on a warm Christmas Eve. Today, I wanted to move and rearrange some plants in the back and I had to take some plants outside. When I went further inside and moved more plants around, I was greeted with a wonderful surprise. Oh my goodness. Hey baby. So this is a swallowtail that I saw a few weeks ago. It was a caterpillar, I have no clue where he went, but this is him. <laughs> oh, come on. I was so happy that the caterpillar grew into a beautiful butterfly. I'm trying to film him a bit before I let him out. <laughs> oh, hey. I didn't know how long it had been an adult in the greenhouse, but it was active and flying in the confined space. Okay, okay, come on. <laughs> there he goes. Yeah, what's this moving? <gasps> It's my baby! You're so pretty! Oh my goodness! Oh, you're so pretty! Okay, let me let you out. The weather outside was warm and would be warm for another go, week. So I knew it was safe for the butterfly to go out in the real world. I carefully attempted to pick it up. Oh, baby. <laughs> he jumped off. Let me see. Get over here. Hey, baby. Oh, 
goodness, baby, come on. No, 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 no. Okay, okay, okay. Come on now. There you go, there you go. Stay, 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 stay. There, baby. There you go. Let's see if I can get close. Oh my goodness! There he goes. Oh my goodness! I was so happy to see the butterfly fly into the world. I tried to see where it flew, but I didn't see it in the yard. It may have flown into the field by the time I made it in the yard. That was such a special moment. What was also special was that my Caracara navel tree that was outside had a swallowtail caterpillar on its leaves. I've seen the caterpillar a few times and it was big enough to possibly become a pupa in a week or so. I figured that because it was unseasonably warm over the past two months, many insects were still hanging around. I've seen another swallowtail caterpillar since November, so I was happy that the butterflies were still around. So I left the caterpillar on the Caracara since it was protected from wind and cold weather. It had plenty to eat from the small tree. I've never had a caterpillar in my winter greenhouse. I've had plenty of tree and leopard frogs and small lizards hanging out in the warm greenhouses, but I've never had a caterpillar. It was a one in a lifetime moment and I'd love to give another caterpillar a chance to grow into a beautiful butterfly. I had a great Christmas Eve holiday surprise. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and ring the notification bell and follow my Instagram and Facebook pages for more videos about exotic fruits, growing exotic fruits, gardening, outdoor crafts, and more. <laughs> Thank you.